All right, today is day three in unit three. We're gonna name and write formulas for binary ionic compounds. Now, before we start, I want y'all to look at this word binary. If you say the word bi, bi means two. Okay, so binary ionic compounds, two together make one compound. Okay, all right, so let's review your properties of metals. Remember, they have high luster, they're malleable, they tend to be solid at room temperature, they have good electrical conductivity and good thermal conductivity, and they lose electrons to become cations. Your properties of nonmetals, they're poor conductors, they're brittle as solid, so they're not malleable. They're poor thermal conductors, they're dull solids, they tend to be gases at room temperature, and they gain electrons to become anions. All right? So your ionic compounds, many of your compounds will dissolve in water. Remember, you had sodium chloride, NaCl, that's table salt. And you can dissolve table salt in a cup of water pretty easy. Do you want to drink it? No, but you can still do it. Solutions of many ionic compounds conduct electricity. So your ions can move. And they're also insulators at their solid state. Ionic compounds also have very high melting boiling, melting points, um, and they're brittle, so they tend to shatter. All right. So you can practice with this. What do metals do with their electrons? Remember, your your metals create cations, and if they're cations, then they're positive. Remember that T you think of as one positive. So they tend to lose electrons. They form a positive charge and they're called cations. All right, your alkali metals have a charge of plus one and your alkaline earth metals have a charge of plus two. All right, now how about your nonmetals? Your nonmetals are on the right hand side of your periodic table and they tend to gain electrons. So they form a negative charge, and these are called anions, okay? Your halogens are group 17, and they will gain one electron. Your noble gases are in group 18, and they gain no electrons. Remember, noble gases are nobility, okay? Everybody wants to be like them. They already have a full valence shell, so they don't want to share, right? Nomenclature is a system for naming chemical compounds, and it has very specific rules you must follow. Remember, in chemistry, almost right is wrong, okay? So we're gonna start with the simplest type of ionic compounds. These are your binary ionic compounds. So remember, binary just means two elements are present. So bi equals two, okay? Remember, if you bisect something, that means you take it, you cut it in half to create two parts. Okay, your ionic bond means it's a metal with a nonmetal, so M plus NM, or a cation bonded to an anion, all right? So step one, whenever we're doing this, we're going to name your cation first, and then you name your anion and change the ending to ide. So remember whenever we said sodium chloride? Chlorine is the anion that joined with sodium. So we just change that ene to ide, which is right here. Now right here we have lithium. We're going to write that first. Lithium. And we have bromine. So we're going to start out writing bromine. Then grab our eraser. Erase those last three and write bromide, I-D-E, okay? Now we have this one. So we're gonna write calcium, because that's our first one. And then we have fluorine, but we're gonna write ide instead of ene, okay? Calcium fluoride. All right, so let's practice with some of these. RB, that's gonna be rubidium. All right, and then fluorine. 
but we're going to write fluoride. All right. Next one, we have calcium, Ca. And then our anion is phosphorus. But we don't write phosphorus, we're going to write phosphide. Calcium phosphide. All right, next one. Our metal, or our cation, is strontium. Strontium. And it's bonded with a nitride anion. Sorry, these are all supposed to be lowercase. That is my bad. So rubidium fluoride, calcium phosphide, and strontium nitride. All right, then this last one, our metal is potassium. K is potassium. And the anion it's connected with is oxide. Okay, now I need to plug my computer in. And we're back. All right. So sometimes you will be given the name of a compound and be asked to write your chemical formula. This requires four careful steps and a periodic table. You always want your periodic table. Okay. So if you have it, it should be in front of you. Do not guess. Follow your steps. And almost right is wrong. If you make the wrong compound, then you will have not the right solution. And sometimes that's really bad. Okay. So we're going to practice aluminum oxide. All right. So step one, we're going to write your symbols. Cation first. Remember your cation has a positive charge. Think of that positive T that's in there. So that is going to be your metal. For now, we're just going to write that over metal. Okay, first, and then your anion. And your anion is negative and your nonmetal. Okay, so step one is write our symbols. We have aluminum, all right? Aluminum's pretty easy. That's A L, all right? And then oxide is what we're bonding with, and that's going to be oxygen. I'm going to put O, all right? Step two. Above each symbol, we're going to write the oxidation numbers, all right? So we have aluminum is our cation, and oxygen is our anion. Now above it, we're going to write their oxidation numbers. We get that from their group number. Or we get it from the exception block. which we did last class, okay? So aluminum has a charge of plus three, okay? And oxygen has a charge of minus two. So step three is we switch those charges around. We have our aluminum plus three, then we have our oxygen minus two. So we're gonna do our crisscross. We're gonna take that plus three, we're going to bring it over here. We take that minus two. We're going to bring it over here. So it makes that crisscross in the middle. Okay. Then we reduce and erase your oxidation numbers. So let's do it again. We have Al uh, plus three. We have O minus two. We're going to take that plus three and move it over there. And we'll take your O, move it over there, okay? Let me erase these zeros. So your plus three is going to go down here. It's just going to be a three. And then your two is going to come down here. It's going to be AL2. Then we can erase these. And we have, bring it up here, AL2O3. Aluminum oxide. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So let's do magnesium and sulfur. All right. So magnesium is a metal. Okay. So that's going to be your cation. And sulfur is a nonmetal. So that's going to be your anion. Okay. So step one. I'll write this in a different color. 
your anion we're going to make blue non-metal anion all right so step one let's write out our symbols magnesium is m g and sulfur is s okay step two we're going to write your oxidation numbers magnesium is in group two so it has plus two remember it's a cation and cations are positive okay sulfur is in group 16 so it wants three sorry it wants two two I don't know what I'm thinking sulfur is in group 16 so it wants two electrons and your anions are negative we we'll put negative two over here step three we're gonna do our crisscross those are supposed to be arrows I'm not that great at drawing all right so our magnesium, our plus two came down to sulfur, and on sulfur, our minus two came down to magnesium. So step four, we need to reduce. So we see how we have two here and two here. We're gonna divide those by each other. Then we have magnesium sulfide. All right. So let's practice. We have calcium bromide. So calcium is your metal. So that's also your cation and it's positive. We're going to write Ca here and then next to it we're going to write brom bromine which is a non-metal. So it's your anion and negative. All right? So Br. All right? Calcium has a charge of plus 2. So we can go ahead. We're going to write plus two up here. Bromine has a charge of minus one. All right, let's do our crisscross. Calcium will get that one and bromine gets the two. We can erase what we wrote before. So we have calcium bromide. We can write that. We can simplify it one more time. C-A-E-R-2. All right, next we have potassium nitride. Okay, potassium is your metal, which means it's a cation and it's positive. And nitride or nitrogen is a nonmetal and it's an anion, so it's negative. All right, so step one, potassium symbol is K and it has a charge of plus one. And nitrogen has a charge of plus three. All right, so step one, that nitrogen is going to get that one, and the potassium is going to get nitrogen's three down here. And then let's clean it up, and we have potassium three nitride. All right, next one we have magnesium chloride. Magnesium is a metal. It is a cation, so it's positive. Chloride is a nonmetal. It's an anion, so it's negative. So magnesium, we're going to write Mg, and it has a charge of plus 2, because it's in group 2. Chloride has a charge of negative 1, because it's in group 17. Remember, it wants one more electron. Okay? So magnesium is going to give chlorine its two electrons, and then it's going to gain chlorine's one electron. And then we're going to clean it up. We have magnesium chloride okay so you notice how magnesium we have the one here and same thing up here nitrogen had the one we don't need to add that on because we're going to assume that the one is there okay all right so now lastly we have beryllium oxide beryllium is a metal so it's a cation which makes it positive and then oxygen is a non-metal so it's an anion and it's negative okay so we're going to write beryllium symbol is BE, 
and it has a charge of plus 2. And then we're going to write oxygen, which also has a charge of minus 2. Is it is in group 16. Okay. Oxygen is going to get beryllium's 2, and beryllium is going to get oxygen's 2. So we can see our numbers are the same. We're going to go ahead and reduce those. Okay. So if we divide it by 2, then it would be 1. So our answer is BEO, beryllium oxide. Good job. Don't forget to go take your homework quiz.